and Chekhov's Night Spot proudly presents internationally famous top comedian Hector Nichol. I'm a big come on the planet, I got an empty cat to train. I'll never forget the track that was played on me by Sandy Lane. She said to me when you gang to the tunes, baby, for Katie Payne, my loon, she buys a number eight to sleep in glass. We my big come on the planet, I got an empty cat to train. I'll never forget the track that was played on me by Sandy Lane. She said to me when you gang to the tunes, baby, for Katie Payne, my loon, she buys a number eight to sleep in glass. Again. I'm always drunk, you know, it's a, sh it's a shame, isn't it, eh? I walked in the pub there, you know, just to change my breath, like, and there was a fella sitting there, he just had one ear, this boy. I said, would you like a pint? He said, I've got one ear, so I didn't buy one, you know. <laughs> so, I, it was a, <laughs> it was a, there was a big blonde, there was a big blonde standing at the counter. What a beautiful, oh, shh, lovely pair of blue eyes, beautiful girl, you know. But she looked up his side, you know, I said, what's wrong? She said, I'm lonely. I said, what are you having? She said, a double brandy. I said, no wonder you're bloody lonely. <laughs> I said, would you like to come up to my place and listen to a few records? She said, what if I don't like the records? I said, well, you can get dressed and go home. <laughs> I, 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 I get my name, eh? There's a fella sitting there in there, bald, he'd this boy. Baldy, he was bald, you know. And this chap come in and he rubbed his head like that. He said, that feels like my wife's ass. <laughs> and the boy said, so it does. <laughs> That's it, yeah, yeah. It was a f <laughs> well, yeah, man, eh? So I, I sat down at this table. I sat down at the table and there was an Englishman there and an Irishman there, you know. An Englishman said to the Irishman, he said, look, he said, uh, what would you do if a doctor gave you six months to live? And the Irishman said, I got a Guinness to get my hands on. He said, I got in a blaze of glory, he said. And the Englishman said, I think I do the same. He said, got all the beer I could drink. He said, now I go out in a blaze of glory. And he turned to me, he said, what would you do if a doctor gave you six months to live? I said, I got another bloody doctor. <laughs> 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 you get... You get a little laugh, don't you, eh? <laughs> this fella... You get him coming in there, you know. This Aberdonian fella walked in, you know. Never done it, of course, you know. You could tell I was a never done it. I had low pockets and short arms, you know. <laughs> <laughs> you wouldn't get into a fight unless it was a free for all, you know. <laughs> and, <laughs> and he stood at the bar and there was a big bill up in the bar that said, Plowman's lunch, one pound. And he said, Barman, fits this Plowman's lunch. She had doing impressions too, you know. Fix this plumage lunch. The bum would say, well, I say, it's a pint of heavy, a pie, and half an hour upstairs with a barmaid. The neighbor down there said, uh, whose pies are they? Me. 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 Yeah, I'm all coming in, you know. This. <laughs> this wee white fella come in. We white fella, you know. And he walks, he walk, he walks up to the bar and he sees the bar and he says, I bet you a pound I can bite my right eye. <laughs> the bar and he says, I bet you a pound I can bite my right eye. The bar and said, all right, and he put the money down the boy took out his glass eye and he bit it like, see. <laughs> the bar and said, that's very clever. He says, I bet you a pound you can't bite your left eye. The boy said, all right. He put the money down like that and he took out his teeth and he bit his left eye. See? <laughs> see? You get them off. 
No, it's amazing. It's amazing the people you meet come in your body, you know. I was standing there talking to this fella, I was talking away to that boy, and he say, I said to him, I said, look, I said, uh, you never see any colored fellas come down here. Any of these Pakistanis or any of that. The boy said, what are you talking about? He said, there's three Pakistanis just went in the gents' toilet, and now he said, he said, now tell me they're well developed, these boys. He said, I think I'll go in and have a wee shifty. And he went away in the gents and they came out again, he said, I've never seen anything like it, he said. What a size, he said. <laughs> he said, what's made, he said, the one in the middle's got a white one. <laughs> I said, the white one? I said, I'll better go and have a look at this myself, you know. <laughs> now and then they'll come out again, I said, I said, three Pakistanis. There's three miners and the one in the middle's on his honeymoon, I said. Yeah, I'm off and then, yeah. You've got to laugh, haven't you, eh? <laughs> another joker walked in, this other joker walked in, and he said to the barman, he said, see all that whiskey you've got there? He said, I'll be blindfolded, I can tell it, any one you've got it. I can tell it, he says, what's more, I'll tell you where it came from. The barman said, all right. And he gave him this glass of whiskey. He said, what's that? He said, eh, that's dimple made by John Head. Oh, I said, that's right, he's right, no, she said, that's right. And he gave him another one. He said, that's black label, made by Johnny Walker. And he said, that's right, it's right, right enough. He gave him another one, he said, that's white label, made by John Jewett. And the barman winked at me and he went round the back and he came by, he said, what's that? And the boy went like that. He said, Ooh. He said, that's piss, he said, I bet, who's is it? <laughs> Yeah, they laugh, don't you, eh? <laughs> you do, you get a laugh. But I never worry, you know. I never get too drunk. I know my limits, like. <laughs> I was down at Wembley there. I don't want to worry about a goalpost and all that, you know. I never use them anyway, you know. <laughs> but... See, my limit's six whiskey. When I put six beans in my pocket, and every time I take a whiskey, I take a bean, and I know when I've had enough, it's the same with a beer. I put six beans in my pocket, and every time I take a pint, I take a pea, see? <laughs> I'm pain and peeing all night, like, you know. <laughs> but, <laughs> but anyway, I forgot my beans tonight. No, but I got, I got really drunk that night there. And, and I, I, I went in the car park and I fell flat on my face in the car park. And this big policeman came up to me. He said, do you want to lift it? I said, aye, I couldn't help myself. <laughs> <laughs> he said, what are you doing in the car park anyway? I said, well, I'll tell you the truth of the constable. I said, I've lost the keys in my car. He says, the keys in your car? He said, look at the state you're in. He said, look at you. He said, the front of your trousers is all open. I said, my God, I've lost my girlfriend as well. I said, yeah, yeah. He said to me, he said, you better go way up the road, he said. And you leave the car there in the morning. And I was staggering up the road, and I got accosted by a poof. <laughs> the wee Irish poof he was. We fell my cracking, you know. <laughs> and... <laughs> you could tell it was an Irish poof right away. He liked a pat in the back, you know. But I just ruined his business right away, you know. <laughs> and I was walking further up the street and I met this other policeman. 
I said, listen, I've just been accosted by a poop. He said, which way did he go? He said, what are you doing out at three o'clock in the morning anyway? I said, I'm going to lecture. He said, a lecture at three o'clock in the morning. I said, I sometimes the wife stays up before us. I got him all right. I always managed to get him, you know. And I was being up all quiet, like. When I was tiptoeing up the stairs and I had a half bottle in my pocket. And here I tripped and I fell right in my half bottle. And I felt something trickling down my leg, you know. I said, I hope that's blood, you know. And, and I had a presence, a presence of mind to go into the bathroom, you know. I went into the bathroom and I got to the big mirror and I took my trousers down. And they got the stick plaster out. And I stuck myself up with stick plaster. And the next morning I wakened up, the wife said to me, were you drunk last night? I said, no, me. She said, what's all that stick plaster doing on the mirror? Give me an answer sometimes, you know. <laughs> but she, 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 the woman, the woman next door, she came in the morning and she said to my wife, we Jimmy's got a hiccup, she said. And I can't get him stopped. And my wife said, well, why don't you tie a wee string around his wee bobby? <laughs> and she tried that and it worked. She stopped him. And that night a man came in drunk with a hiccup. And, and she, she got a big blue ribbon and she tied it around his ding -ling -ling. And when he wakened up in the morning, she said, uh, where were you last night? And he looked down and he said, I don't know where I was, he said, but one first bloody prize. <laughs> Sing a wee, would you like a wee song? Aye. I've got a special one for you tonight. This is a lovely thing, you know. Written specially. It was uh, called Love Me Tender. It was written by a poof with piles. That's a nice one. <laughs> now you can all join in the chorus because this is a very simple song. And Otherwise, I couldn't sing it, you know. Fall along the diddle 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 Hey, hey, hey! Fall along the diddle along the diddle along the diddle along the diddle Fall along the diddle along the day. There's a big black coon in the glass cartoon. He's known to the folks for miles around. His voice is husky, sweet and cool. Say no more standing, the buses fall. Fall along the diddle 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 along the Hey, hey! The real song, isn't it, eh? You like more? <laughs> now, did you hear about Donald Duck? At marriage, he was out of luck. He divorced his wife, alas, alack, cause he didn't like her quack. <laughs> The boy can kiss his girl goodbye, the sun can kiss the butterfly, the white can kiss the shimmering glass, and the inland ribbon you can kiss my... <laughs> A 
boy once kissed his girl good night. She really was his heart's delight. Although his kiss was full of sex, she crossed her legs and broke his pig. <laughs> I love you very much. It's very nice to meet you tonight, you know. And it's uh, getting near the summer again, and you know people are looking for places to go to holidays, you know. <laughs> and it's getting hard, isn't it, to play, eh? How am I going to Spain myself? I'm going to see, next year I'm going to see Scotland in the World Cup. Yeah. I like Spain, you know, because I'll tell you, I've been going there for a few years now, you know. Um, I mean, the first time I went there, it was during the Glasgow Fair, and they were all running about shouting, Bonus Nutchie! <laughs> bonus Nutchie! And I said, what the hell is this Bonus Nutchie? I went to the Spanish bar, and I said, hey, what's this Bonus Nutchie they're all talking about? He said, that's good night in Spanish. I said, oh, good night in Spanish, yeah. So I'm walking up the road, and saw this fella, I said, hey, Bonus Nutchie! He said, piss off your Spanish bag. <laughs> I like it, yeah, yeah. Oh, I like it over there. I like it anywhere. <laughs> we've, we've <laughs> See, when we go to Spain, the boys and I, first place we make for is the red light district. Because I'm well known down there, yeah? I used to be a shoplifter there. And, and we were all sitting in this house of horizontal refreshment, you know? And we were all sort of waiting, anticipating and that, you know? And there was a notice on the wall that said, there's a thousand positions an inch. I thought this is going to cost me, you know. <laughs> and, <laughs> my big pal went in first and he came out and he said, 8,000 pesetas it cost me. I said, 8,000 pesetas? <laughs> 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 then my pal went and he came out and he said, 9,000 pesetas. I said, 9,000 pesetas? <laughs> I went in. I come out and said, 1,000 per day. <laughs> he said, how do you manage that? I said, I paid him the way. Can you beat Spain, I said. She's great going to Spain. You got these lovely bigot tails in that, eh? Great in that Bacardi and Coke and big swimming pools and that. I mean, one day I had a few big cardies and I went down to the swimming pool and there was this beautiful big blonde sitting with a bikini on, just next to the pool, you know. Oh, I thought I'll chat her up. I said, eh, I'm going to duck you. She said, away you go, you can't even say it right. I said, <laughs> <laughs> oh, I mean, I like balls of that one, eh? But it's getting harder to go places now, you know. I mean, it's all in straight and all that. And I mean, let's face it, the world's that small now. You can't go where somebody's been before, like, you know. You can't go. No, it's true enough. I mean, last year I went in and it and I really enjoyed it. You feel a wee bit embarrassed when you go in for, you know, nothing on. You feel, you know, you're looking about to see if you know anybody, you know. And, I said to this fella, is that Dick Brown? He said, it should be in me here a fortnight. <laughs> <And> <laughs> I 
I'm quite happy to get out for the night and get away from the wife for a wee while. See my wife, my good, I'm not... She, fat, did you say? Fat! You don't know what I've got to go through. <laughs> when she takes over course, it's her feet disappear, you know? <laughs> She's got more chins than a Hong Kong phone book. She's, she's, she's an unemployed school teacher, you know. She's got no class. <laughs> when I met her, she was suffering from sex discrimination. <laughs> Nobody with gear in it. <laughs> her body was all marked with fellas that wouldn't touch her with a ten-foot pole. She's writing a new book now for women's lip <laughs> called 101 Ways to Get a Headache. <laughs> <laughs> of course, I was just unlucky, you know. I'm not, I was unlucky, I went to the fortune teller. She said, you'll be unlucky until you're 40. Then you'll get used to it. You're going to be a woodwork soon and your wife will be poisoned. I said, well, I'll be acquitted. <laughs> in this section, of who's a toner? We sleep in different rooms. I mean, it's ridiculous. I tell you, at two o'clock in the morning there last week, I was lying in bed having a look at my dandy. Thinking about a beano, you know. <laughs> and I heard her screaming her head off in the next room. And I got up and put my pajamas on. You never know who you're going to meet like, you know. And I went along in the corner to open the door and here there was two feet going out the window. And she was lying in bed screaming her head off. I said, what happened? She said, a fella just came in here and they raped me twice. I said, he raped you twice. Why didn't he shout for me? She said, I thought it was you until I started to do a second time. <laughs> it's humiliating that, you know. It's an insult to your manhood. I mean, I went to the doctor and never... I, I said, doctor, I said, uh, I can't satisfy my wife. He said, join a club. <laughs> I said, can you not give me some of these hormone tablet things? <laughs> oh, he said, I've got a new one, it's just out. He said, but it's very strong. He said, if you don't swallow it quick, you got a stiff neck. <laughs> I even went into the sex shop. I went into the sex shop and I said to the girl, I said, give me three contraceptives, miss. She said, don't miss me. I said, well, give me four then. <laughs> I said to her, I said, will you, will you give me a screw from my door? She said, I'll give you one for nothing. And this we insignificant fella, we insignificant fella, he came in and he said to, he said a girl, he said, could I have a contraceptive please? She said, what size? I said, that size. <laughs> she said, that would only fat a moose, he said, I know the bloody hoose is fall out of my face. She says, can you not put glass in her holes? They say, glass in her holes? I can't even cash one. <laughs> <laughs> well, these 
contraceptives or something else, isn't it, eh? Here there were the two girls, the two girls out. When we were in swimming and they come out and they were all wet. <laughs> and this one put her hand in here and she pulled out a contraceptive with a cigarette in it. <laughs> now I say, here that's a handy thing, that. Keeps your cigarette dry. She said, what do you call that? She said, that's a contraceptive, you get them in a chemist. So this girl went to the chemist, she said, could I have a contraceptive, please? He said to the, what size? She said, give me one to put a camel. It's a hard game, I see, man, eh? You never know the minute, eh? Things are bad then, of course, you know. There's no lady like good old days during the war and that. Everybody were, was pulling for one another, you know. During the war. <laughs> oh, yeah. The spirit's missing, you know. I used to sing all the good old war songs and all that. And people were, you know, friendly and that. What are you got now? You got these punk rockers and that, eh? You're going about spitting in one another and that, yeah? All the labels and that. See that? Frank, I feel he's got a new one out and I'll remember you, you bastard. You know that. <laughs> I'll tell you, I'll hear a good old song myself, I'll tell you. I love the good old songs. I'm going to sing one for you tonight. Good old war song. This is called The Old Fashioned Way by Eileen Back. <laughs> What's worse than a kiss from Dracula? A touch up a Captain Hook. <laughs> oh, your heart, I yearn. I was speaking to an Irishman there. I said, "What side was the Pope shot on?" He said, "I think it was ITV." The boys are far away. They dream of war. Two Jews went to Mount Olive, and Popeye wouldn't let them. When you come and think of the only thing that wasn't rusty about Popeye was a bit of hard in olive oil, you know. <laughs> There's a silver lining. <laughs> Two poops met in the street. Two poops. The one said, I'm pregnant. That one said, eh, uh, who's the father? He said, do you think I've got eyes in the back of my head? <laughs> you know, this sex is just like strip poker, you know. She strips and you... Cloud. Inside out. <laughs> My wee boy came in the other day, said, Daddy, what's that wrinkled old thing that Grandpa sometimes takes it? I said, that's your granny, son. <laughs> <laughs> My 
Mama Paul said to me, he said, you ever been so drunk you've kissed your wife's belly button? I said, I've been drunker than that. of bees get milk? Boobies. <laughs> Till the boys home. Let's see you singing that, eh? Keep the home fires gave me good advice when I joined up. She said to me, you keep your bells open and your legs shut and you'll be all right. Of course, I had three sisters in the services, you know. One was a whack and one was a whap and the other one walked in the lighthouse. She was a wick. <laughs> Never forget when I went from a medical. This big dirty doctor. He said to me, he said, all right, strip off, strip off, and he examined me. He said, you're going to have a baby soon. I said, how soon? He said, as soon as I get my clothes off. He said. <laughs> oh, I didn't like it. Oh, I didn't like it at first, you know. There was lights out at nine o'clock and candles out at ten, you know. And I'm, then they said to me, would you like to mess with the officers? I said, could I knock my dinner first? <laughs> what a life. Well, they put me on the HMS Victory, Nelson's old flagship. Put me on there, showing the tourists around. Now I was showing this old woman around the deck one day. And I came with this big brass plaque on the floor. I said to this old woman, I said, that's the exact spot where Nelson fell. She said, I'm no surprise, I nearly bloody tripped out of my chest. <laughs> then they put me on the HMS abortion. That's a baby destroyer, you know. And what a crew was on there. Oh, big joke strap, what a man he was. He took me out, he said, I'm a hurting you. I said, I, you're stunning my fit. <laughs> he said, you enjoyed that, didn't you? 
I said, how do you know? I said, well, he kept nodding your head. I said, no, I forgot to take my tights off, you know. But... <laughs> takes all kinds to make a crew, you know. We had a wee poof on board as well. Wee poof. And one day... <laughs> oh, he bent over backwards to please them, you know. All right. One day he fell overboard and somebody shouted, Throw out a boy! He said, this is no time to talk about sex, get me out of here! <laughs> he finished up a rear admiral. <laughs> <laughs> then they told me to take out the admiral's pinnace. How was I? I know it was a wee boat, you know I <laughs> He got me into trouble. I said, what are you going to do about this? He said, well, if it's a boy, he said, I'll give you 5,000 pounds. If it's a girl, I'll give you 3,000 pounds. I said, look, if I have a miscarriage, will you give me another chance? <laughs> <laughs> See, that sick bee, I enjoyed it in there. See all the men in the scud, you know. Oh, oh. Big row of them there waiting for their medicals with nothing known, you know. <laughs> like a row of one-armed bandits it was, you know. <laughs> and... <laughs> they try to tell you all men are equal, don't you believe it? <laughs> They're all trying to water a ticket to you. This fella came in, he said, I've cut my finger. I said, what, your whole finger? He said, no, the one next to you. <laughs> Another fellow came, this other fellow came in and he said, hey, there's something wrong with my wally. And I went to the doctor, I said, this fellow says there's something wrong with his wally. He says, you don't call his wally in here. Call it his thumb. He said, now what's wrong with his thumb? I said, he can't pee with it. And, <laughs> So the big doctor came out and he said to this fella, he said, he said, all right, he said, come on, drop your slacks. He said, let's have a look at it. And this boy dropped his trousers, you know, and I burst out laughing. <laughs> Seen a bigger woodbine, like, you know. And he said to me, he said, what are you laughing at? He said, it's been swollen like that for weeks. <laughs> They're all coming in there, you know. <laughs> this other guy, he was trying to, he said, bad eyesight, you know. He said, I've got bad eyesight, he said, and I've got a wife to prove it. <laughs> and, it, and we kept showing him all the tickets and all that, and he kept saying, I can only see a blur, I can only see a blur. And the big doctor said to me, he said, will you go and strip off, he said, we'll see what you can see. And I stripped off and I minced in, you know. He said, I can only see a blur, I can only see a blur. And the doctor said, you might only see a blur. He said, but your wallies point straight to Fort Mountain. <laughs> you get a real laugh, man, you know. You do. <laughs> what can you do anyway? I mean, they're cutting the Navy now too, you know. It's no, I'm no going on in any of these submarines. They were all trying to get their periscope up. You know, it's murder. <laughs> I'm not going to be. Just a luck what you're going to be anyway, you know. I mean, look, take your likes of these, all these pop singers. I could have been a pop singer. Mine and Sandy Shaw, mine had a... She used to sing, I was walking by a lamppost down in the high street. I felt something soft and sticky beneath my bare feet. That's the reason why I sing. Keep your puppet on a string. <laughs> It depends what Mother Nature's got to, you know, to offer to you. Where she kisses you, Mother Nature, that's what you're going to be. Do you like some Liberace, you know? Mother Nature kissed his hand and became a great penis. Yeah. Frank Sinatra, Mother Nature kissed his tonsil and became a great singer. I wonder where she kissed Lester Piggott. I was just thinking that the other day. He 
you get one of these pop singers, you know? Dolly Patton's greatest hits, you know? I... That's how it sings, eh? Sometimes it's hard if you are lucky, you know? <laughs> Cuddle up a little closer, it's shorter than you think, you know? I can sing like these. Well, Lena Martell, there's another one. She's a lovely singer. She sings that one. One inch at a time, Big Peter. <laughs> That's all I'm asking of you. God, give me the strength to take all that length. One inch at a time. <laughs> then there was a... Gladys Knight and her pips, there's another one. She must have got kissed in the pips, I think, you know. Many she sings some lovely one. That's a lovely one that she sings that help me make us real tight. That's a nice one. Isn't it? <laughs> or scalp me naked through the night, I don't know. Okay. You think we could try that one, Kenny? Yeah. Ah, we could do that one. <laughs> Shake the dandruff from your head Shake it loose and let it fall Take the moth balls that you draw And tonight we'll have a ball You've been boozing half the night Drinking heavy beer and lye There's a party neath the bed in case you need it for a shave. <laughs> I don't care who's right or wrong. I know I'll enjoy myself. <laughs> Cause the Vaseline's on the table. And the shoehorn's on the shelf. <laughs> Darling, take me while I'm warm And the thing should prove too tight You can give me chloroform To help me make it through the night As Miss Grandpair said to Miss Finepair, there's no safe way And help me make it really lovely tonight. <laughs> then I met my first Yankee. He said, I knew you were Scotch by the way you rolled your R's. <laughs> I thought it was the high heels, you know. <laughs> he said, do you smoke after sex? I said, I don't know, I've never looked. Took me dancing. I was dancing around there. It was beautiful. And he said, <laughs> he said to me, he said you've got lovely hair, lovely eyes, lovely lips, a lovely mouth. He said I've only got one thing against you. I said I know I can feel it. <laughs> he said that's my wage packet. I said it must be some firm you are for us. We've got three rises in the last half hour. But <laughs> <laughs> a hard game. See you on the streets, this murder. You meet all kinds of good but We could walk down Hope Street one night. In Glasgow there. Hope Street, you know. This wee poof. Wee poof come up to me. He said, hello, prostitute. I said, hello, substitute. <laughs> 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 he 
He said, eh, what would you charge me? Well, I didn't know where he looked, you know, I didn't know which way he looked, you know what I mean? I said, well, to you, I said, a pound and treble green stamps. He said, how can you do it so cheap? I said, I've got knee womb. He said, knee womb? I said, no, we'll have to date in the wubby. <laughs> I mean, you've got to try to get a day off in that game, you know. I mean, one Friday it was my day off, and the hot pants were all the fashion then, like. And I was going into the CNAs for a pair of hot pants. My other ones are bummed too, you know. And, and CNAs were beautiful, they had lovely hot pants, and I, I got a lovely pair, and I said to the girl, I said, how do you tell her back to the front? She said, look, it says it on it, CNA. And, You meet all kinds. <laughs> Man, this big sailor one day, big sailor. Whoa. He said, I'm on a naval destroyer. You know what a naval destroyer is? I said, aye, that's a hula hoop with a nail in it. <laughs> I said, and what do you think of the wine women in song? He says, a change for rum bum and moose organ. <laughs> <laughs> he said, how am I doing? I said, you're doing about three knots. He said, what do you mean? I said, you're not big enough, not long enough, and you're not on. <laughs> well, Big Sadie was on the game with me too, you know. She's a character, Big Sadie. She said to me one day, she said, I like these fellas, but Stirling, she said, they just walk up to you and put it in. I said, no, give me the ones for Falker. I said, they put it in and then walk up to you. <laughs> Thank you. You're a wonderful audience here at Checkers. Did you have a nice meal at Checkers? Yeah. Lovely meal. Mr. Frill does you well, doesn't he? Very nice. I like a good meal myself, you know. Mind you, I like that chinky stuff. Big Sid and I, we've, uh, we phoned up a Chinese restaurant last week, yeah. We voice said, I am Fu King. I said, it's all right, I'll phone back later. <laughs> and, <laughs> so, so, <laughs> so we ordered the table near the waiter. <laughs> and we, were, we walked into this place, hung one or something. Like that. One hung low. I don't know which one it was, but we sat down at the table and the wee chinky waiter came up. I said, bring me some coca leaky soup. He said, coca leaky, coca leaky. I said, yes, Willie Baxter, coca leaky. <laughs> they brought this back. I said, this is pea soup. He said, yes, coca leaky. And there was a notice on the wall, and it said, watch your hat and coat. And while I was doing that, somebody whipped my dinner. <laughs> I tell you, I like the chinky meal. You got a big menu there, and you can't read it, but there's got numbers on it. So you just order the numbers, very good that way. We had a lovely meal with sweet and sour pedigree chum. <laughs> Lemon glazed stovies. Then we had Keith Lorraine. <laughs> I like the Keith Lorraine. Good job we didn't ask for number one. <laughs> Fella walked in and asked for 20 and number six and got 300 weight of rice. <laughs> we with a lovely dessert, beautiful dessert. Oh, it was really gorgeous. Plums and custard and all that. And Big Sadie dropped all the juice down the front of her blouse. She said to me, uh, do plum stains come out? I said, I hope so, I've just bloody swallowed one. I said,
But it's nice to be taken out in that. Go to these take it outy parties, you know. But <laughs> as long as they don't take it out of me, it's all right, you know. But it's going back home again. You never know the minute you're going to be mugged, you know. Or even raped, if you're lucky, you know. There's some of these dirty old men going about, you know. I had one. See, <laughs> you ever had an obscene call? I, I was in the house myself the other night and I lifted the phone and this boy said, Margaret, I'm going to come up there and I'm going to tear up your dress and I'm going to rape you. I said, what you say your name was again? Phone clicked again. Rang again, I lifted up, it said, Margaret, I'm going to come up there. I'm going to tear off your dress and your bra. And I'm going to rip you. I said, hey, you got asthma or something. What the hell's that mean? I said, I said you, we want to chuck it all together and it, and it put it up again. And it was the same all night. Margaret, I'm going... Margaret? I'm saying you're Margaret. I, I got paid up, you know. I phoned up the police. I said, this is an idiot, I said. He's been phoning all night. I said, he's never come up yet, I said. <laughs> <laughs> I said, the next time he phones, I said, you trace the call, and they did the trace the call, and they got this fella. Go on. <laughs> And the two of them doing the police office and the big sergeant said to him, I said, I'm going to charge you with everything. He said, rape, seduction, obscene language, the law. He said, I'm going to throw the bookie. Throw the bookie. The boy said, just a minute. He said, I know my rights. He said, I'm allowed one phone call. He said, carry on. He said, Margaret, I'm going to come up there. <laughs> Never allowed these dirty old men going to be. Yeah, but, uh, did you hear about that dirty old joker that made his wife wear ten pairs of drawers? Said it was mere fun looking for her and finding it. <laughs> but the old joker, oh, this old joker, you know, he walked into the hotel, he said to the manager, bring me a blonde chamber pot and a violin. The manager said, a blonde chamber pot and a violin? He said, aye, when you get him my age, he said, you don't know whether he diddle, fiddle or piddle. <laughs> You see these old gents, these old fellas, you can't kill them off, you know. I mean, they can't do it, but they're thinking about it all the time. This old joker's about 94 and he's going to land the road like that with a stick, you know. And he meets this prostitute. She said, you've had it. He said, how much do I owe you? <laughs> you never know. Two old jokers. Can he beat the old gent, you know? Two old jokers there in the hospital. They're in the hospital. The next better one and the first one said, uh, K K K. <laughs> hey, J J J J J J Jimmy. Hey, J Jimmy. What what are you and 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 you and and you? What's wrong with you? <laughs> now one said, uh, I've got prostate trouble. He said, Hey, J J Jimmy. Whoa, 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 whoa. What's a p -p 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 prostate? No one said, I'll peel it, you talk. Tiny bit is old in the room. Oh, it's just a luck anyway. So I always say that, you know. See that old woman up in Aberdeen there, she discovered oil in her back getting Oil? In the back garden, the big insurance bear, a big Yankee insurance boy there, he said, listen, honey, he said, he said, you better insure your hole in case it dries up, he said. <laughs> <laughs> he said, you take out this policy when you're 65, you get a hundred bucks a day. She said, when I'm 65, one buck a day, they me. <laughs> Ha, 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 ha.
<laughs> like that woman here, this woman, she, she married a commercial traveller, now that's a dangerous thing to do, commercial traveller's wife, and he used to go home every week in life and he wasn't worth terms. He'd been at her all week with somebody else, and she was really sick. She said, you go away every week in life, and you come back here on the Sunday and you're not worth a chow, she said. She said, you never even think of bringing me a present or anything. He said, well, what would you like me to bring you? She said, you could bring me six black hens. He said, what the hell are you wanting six black hens for? She said, to act as pallbearers to that big coat you bring him every week. <laughs> but that's one thing about me. <laughs> I get around all right because <laughs> <I'm done. laughs> I've been a wild rover in my time, I'll tell you that much. Is that right, Kenny? I've been a wild, wild rover. I've been a wild rover for many a year. And I've spent all my money on whiskey and beer. On rum and on brandy and red beer. So, may never, no may never, no more, will I pray the wild rover, so never, no more, more, more. I went to see my sweetheart, they called her Miss Brown, she was having a bath, so she could not come down, I said, slip on something, come down, I pray. So she slipped on the sofa and came to right the week and did so. Me, never, no me, never, no more. Will I play the wild rover? No, never, no more. Mark, Mark. Last bear. This is a bear. all about Twiggy. You know Twiggy, you know. Here, here, where, where, you know. Yeah. Twiggy, she wouldn't wear falsies, you know. You know the difference between falsies and the real thing, you know. Falsies taste like rubber, you know. <laughs> just make a hit record and you'll be a star. It shows you just how lucky some people are. When I think of Twiggy, how she used her wits, and look how far she got. Without any head than it go. Me, never, no me never, no more, will I play the wild rover. Ladies and gentlemen, treat every day as your last because one day you're going to be right. <laughs> and don't take life too seriously because you'll never get out of our life. And to all the virgins in the audience, thanks for nothing. No, never.